Hi! In this video, we will be doing a home experiment which is growing crystal out of alum powder and water. But first, let us discuss about crystal and crystal structure. So what is crystal? Crystal is any solid material whose component atoms are arranged in a specific pattern and whose surface regularity reflects its internal symmetry. Just to give you a small reminder, Please wear your appropriate clothes or safety attire before doing home experiments to avoid any other accidents. And for the crystal structure, here are the models of crystal structure, the HCP, the FCC, and the BCC. The HCP structure has three layers of atoms. Seven atoms are arranged in the shape of hexagon in the both top and bottom layers. Three atoms are seated in the triangular groups of the top and bottom planes in the middle layer. An example of metals that have this kind of structure are cobalt, titanium, and zinc. It has a packing factor of 0.74. Take note that packing factor indicates how close the atoms are packed in a unit cell. And HCP has a coordination number of 12 and contains of 6 atoms per unit cell. For the second model, Copper, gold, and lead possess this kind of crystal structure, which is the FCC, a type of cubic cell. It has atoms at each corner of the cube and six atoms on each face of the cube. As we construct this model, the top and bottom layers have five atoms with the four in the middle layer. The packing factor for this structure is the same as the HCP, which is 0.74 has a coordination number of 12 and contains 4 atoms per unit set. The last one is the type of atom arrangement found in nature, which is the BCC. It is made up of atoms packed in a cube with one atom in the center and one in each corner sharing an atom. Example of this are chromium, iron, and vanadium. It has the least packing factor among the three which is 0.68 has a coordination number of 8 and contains 2 atoms per unit cell. First process in growing crystals is the preparation of saturated alum solution. The initial step is to boil the water to be able to dissolve the alum later. Pour the hot water in a clean jar. Then, add your alum powder. Keep adding alum and stirring until the alum no longer dissolves. You may see a small amount of alum powder at the bottom of the jar. The purpose of this process is to make a saturated solution wherein undissolved substances settle to the bottom. You can also add more hot water until your desired amount is acquired. As you add more water, put more alum in the water to keep it saturated. Keep adding alum and stirring until the alum no longer dissolves. You may see a small amount of alum powder at the bottom of the jar. Tie a piece of thread to a stick. Smear oil on the part of the thread that will be above the solution, so when the crystal starts to form on the thread, they will not attach to the thread that is not below the solution. Then, hang it on the jar. The thread should not extend more than 1 cm below the solution. Then, cover the jar with a piece of cloth or paper to leave it undisturbed. If no crystals form on the thread, pick one crystal that has a good appearance from the several crystals that grew on the bottom of the jar. To choose your seed crystal, transfer the solution to a new jar when pouring. Be careful not to spill any crystals in the new jar. The alum solution should be the only thing in the new jar. Tie a fine thread to the seed crystal. You will hang the seed crystal into the jar far enough so that it will be covered in liquid but won't touch the bottom or sides of the jar. Suspend the crystal in a freshly prepared solution of alum and water. Just like the first procedure, the solution should be saturated at a high temperature. 
so when it cools down, it will become super saturated. Make sure the solution is cooled to room temperature before placing the seed crystal into it. If the water is warm, the seed crystal will dissolve. Carefully hang the seed crystal on the jar, then cover the top of the jar. To keep out dust and dirt, generously cover the jar with a piece of cloth. Dust and dirt particles can mess up the crystal formation. Finally, allow the crystal to grow for a couple of days. There should be visible growth of the crystal. There's a possibility that the crystal will stop growing or will decrease in size. This is because the solution is no longer saturated. To keep it growing, simply repeat the step before this. If size is achieved, remove from the solution and allow it to dry. So what's the science behind that? Super saturated solution can produce crystals such as alum. It is one in which the water, another solute, is forced to hold more atoms than it would normally. Heat and pressure can be used to create this solution. When a supersaturated solution comes into contact with a seed atom or molecule or another impurity in the solution, the other atom comes out of the solution and binds to the seed, so crystal form. The more molecules attach, the larger the crystal will grow. So here are some facts about crystal growth. Considering temperature is necessary for crystal formation, the jars surrounding should be warm as well. Warm air speeds up the evaporation of water which causes the crystal to develop faster. In cooler temperature, the crystals still form but the water will evaporate much more slowly. Light is also required for crystal formation. Again, crystals will develop in the dark eventually but it will take a long time. Light also evaporates water as heat does. And that's it for our home experiment and discussion. I hope you learned something new from us today. Thank you for watching.